Hello, N4H and H here. What in the world is that? Well, if you've been following my videos regarding my uh, ballon choices, there we go. I've tried two different ballons here for the doublet antenna. Uh, so just on the other side of that ballon is, and that's a four to one ballon from Ballon Designs. Just on the other side of that is a ladder line, window line technically that goes outside. In fact, let me do this with the blinds and you can see it. See it right there? There's a little slack in it because I'm, I'm probably going to wind up doing something up there with how it's, well, I want to get a pulley put up there on the tree rather than just, I've had it, I've had it up there for, oh man, 12, 15 years, but just uh, used a slingshot and put the rope over a limb. But that's beside the point. I want you to follow this coax down. That's a LMR 400, nine feet of it, going over here to the Elecraft KPA 1500. So uh, what I want this video to be about, though, is RFI. So it's interesting, but I was checking in with some fellas that I like to talk to in the mornings um, here on, uh, let me go back over there, 3.856 in the mornings, and they reported that I had RF in my uh, audio. So, um, you know, one obvious thing is you want to make your, sure that your radio is grounded, and I'm run over to a, um, a ground a connection I've got back there behind the radio, so everything's grounded to a gra eight foot ground rod outside. And so uh, I was getting RFI in my audio. Interestingly enough, I've worked all kinds of frequencies with that amplifier and not had any RF on the audio. And yes, in case you're wondering, the RF was only in the audio when uh, I was using the amplifier. So 100 watts, I was good, golden. So um, they told me I had some RF in the audio. Again, only on this frequency, and technically it was on this band. Um, but I had actually not used this radio before on that band with the, with the amp and with the doublet. So uh, it was a surprise to me because I had not had any RF in the signal anywhere else. So I went to, uh, you know, uh, went to town, as they say, trying to track down this noise. And so the obvious thing is to, you know, put chokes on your on your um, audio cable here. And I, you know, I was using right now. I've been using the headphone and Vox, but I was using the PR781 before. And I've got an adapter that allows me to, uh, and I've covered this on other videos, but I'll show you. There's an adapter. It allows me to unscrew that from the FTDX 5000 MP and then plug it in over here. It's an adapter. Well, let me show you. Okay, so this adapter right here allows me to take the, the plug out of the 5000, screw it in there, and then I can plug it into the DX10 there. FTDX10. A lot of us call it a DX10 for short. So I was getting RF in it using the PR781, so then I tried the headset, well, same thing, getting RF in. And even on the PR781, you see here, those are some clip-on ferrites, four of them. Those are some unique ones that I found a long time ago, I think at a ham fest. Might have been ham radio outlet. Um, that uh, fold open and they have a little horseshoe shaped thing in there and it allows you to uh, clip it on ladder line or window line. Anyway, four of those did the trick for this microphone, and that was even with the 5000 or even the radio I was using before it. So, um, what did I do to fix it? Well, like I said, I tried some chokes, clip-on chokes here, snap-on chokes, on the microphone cable for the FTDX10, not unlike what I had done here for the PR781 going into the 5000. Did not help. In fact, it, it didn't even put a dent in it. So the next place you want to look is something called common mode current. I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times on the channel here, but uh, when you're operating an antenna on a frequency that it's not resonant on, and let's just face it with a doublet, that's very, very unlikely <laughs> because, um, I mean, it just so happens that this one is resonant beautifully, by the way, on 17 meters. But on every other band, it is not resonant. So what's going to happen is, even though there is a choke up there, you're going to have some leakage through the choke and you're going to have RF on the shield of your coax. And it's commonly referred to as common mode current. 
and um, look current flowing in a wire produces a magnetic field so RF in the shack so I snapped one of those chokes on there there's two and these are made to fit RG8 RG213 or, or LMR 400 size cable you can get them most anywhere uh, online and uh, at, at uh, ham radio stores so I snapped one on there boom instantly uh, dropped the uh, RF and so I had a spare so I went ahead and stuck that one on there because well the more the merrier um, well to be honest with you uh, the RF started coming back when I got above 700 watts which I don't often run much more than that anyway I'm typically running around five or six hundred so uh, but I went ahead and put the other one on there to give me a little bit of insurance in case I do need to run more than 700 and indeed I can now get up to um, about a thousand fifty watts and I didn't go any beyond that because um, the tuner in the Illicraft tells me that uh, my maximum is actually 1,025 watts uh, for the tuner, internal tuner on the amplifier to be able to tune that doublet for uh, 80 meter band. So, and I don't ever run more than 800 anyway. I, I say never, I don't know, in a blue moon maybe. So, uh, I went up to 1,050, pushing it a little bit, and still no RF in the uh, audio. So something as simple as that, snap-on ferrite chokes on your coax. I would do it on every antenna that you have coming into your shack that is a multi-band antenna. Put it this way. If you have an antenna that requires an antenna tuner to operate on other bands, then because uh, it may be that you'll be resonant on certain bands. Off-center fed dipoles are that way. ZS6BKWs are that way. Anytime you have an antenna like that, on the coax coming into the shack, put some of this, um, you know, some snap-on ferrite chokes. It's still a good idea to have a choke ballon outside, but you can have some leak through, and, uh, and that this is taking care of any of the leak through that was coming into my shack. And incidentally, I, I did... I snapped another one, let me show you. Oh boy, that's gonna be hard to see, let me see here. But there it is. I snapped another one, this one's happened to be square. Um, it's round inside though. I snapped that one on the coax for the ZS6 BKW, because again, it's a multi-band dipole. And um, that wire, that cable there, that's going out to my all center fed dipole. And I've got, a, I've got it coiled outside and I've got chokes wrapped around the coil. So, uh, I don't know, I think I might've shown that in another video, I'm not sure. But anyway, so any antenna that's a multi-band antenna coming into the shack, put some, put some snap-on chokes. Uh, again, it's a good idea to have a choke ballon outside, a one-to-one. -one. You know, and, and, and I've said this before, but since I'm shooting a video and discussing ballons, let me reiterate. Buy your ballon for twice the power you think you'll run minimum. In fact, I buy a 5,000 watt ballon if I can get it. Now that one there is a 3KW because it wasn't available in a 5KW. But don't buy, don't say, well, I've got a legal limit amplifier, so I'm going to buy a 1,500 watt ballon, one rated for 1.5 kilowatts. No, no, no. Get one rated for double that at least because it's not an exact correlation of how much power you're running. And furthermore, the ballons uh, they have a core in them that can saturate, and that'll heat up, and then your SWR will go up. So uh, you don't want that to happen. So always over, uh, I should say, over-spec your ballon. Buy double the power rating on a ballon than of what you think you would ever run. So when I'm running 800 watts with a, with a ballon rated for 3,000 watts there, uh, you know, uh, there should be no heat buildup at all in there. Okay, I hope somebody finds this video helpful and informative. You know, it's a terrible thing to have RF in your audio, and it's a real gut punch when you get on the air and somebody tells you you sound terrible. <laughs> so um, that that little simple solution right there took care of it. Okay, of course, don't forget, ground your gear to an 8-foot ground rod outside if, if at all possible. I'm going to admit to you, I know people that refuse to do grounding, but, you know, for safety reasons and RF reasons, it's, I think it's a good idea to ground. But also, uh, when you go to Hamfest and you see these chokes, pick up a few. They've got them, they've got them that'll fit mouse size cables, like your computer mouse. They've got them that will fit 
this size coax, they've got them that will fit RG8X, RG58, uh, various different sizes. But this is one of the, the, the uh, standard grabs for me at a ham fest. And I'll, while I'm on that subject, let me show you another standard grab that I get when I'm at a ham fest. And that is that flat cable right there. That is uh, specially made for RF ground, which you want to get the flat cable because, uh, uh, you know, let me let me give you a refresher here in case you're new or, or you haven't read this yet. Um, this common mode current I'm talking about, well, RF rides on the exterior of a conductor, okay? That's why it's coming back on that shield because that shield's wrapped around that center conductor. It's going to the exterior even of the shield. Well... So, you want to give it as much exterior surface area as you possibly can. So, that's why, uh, when possible, you want to use this, what's called braided cable here. To, and you can buy these at the ham fest in various lengths. Only buy the length you need, though. For grounding purposes, you want to keep them as short as necessary. Alright, uh, so, again, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. Thank you for watching. Thank you to the Patreon team who helped me bring these videos to you. If you would like to join the Patreon team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. Three levels of participation there with some perks for the executive and VIP level um, supporters. And then, uh, hey, if you would, please like the video. Give it a thumbs up. That helps us out with YouTube. Consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe, uh, don't forget. Click that notification bell, and you will be notified when I upload the next video. Again, thanks for watching, and 73 from N4H&H.